Hey folks, welcome back to uh, Right Talk, a production of Tilting a Windmill Media. This is episode 12 for Thursday, February the 12th, 2015, and it's hosted by myself, Dwight Lilly. Today's topic is uh, Nevada State Senate Bills 65 and 81, and yesterday's hearings before the Senate Committee on Government Affairs and I have a special guest here today, uh, Frank Maurizio, president of the Pahrump Private Well Owners Association. And uh, Frank and I and, and our friend John Basta, all three of us attended the hearings yesterday and gave t testimony. And I thought that we would sit down together today and go over that hearing, uh, the problems that we see going on with the water situation here in the valley and how the county is handling that situation, how the uh, state engineer and the state uh, government legislature itself is, is viewing this situation. And so we're going to start off here. I got asked Frank some questions. So the first thing I wanted to do is I want, I want you, Frank, and by the way, welcome hey, aboard. Dwight. First time you've been at, at Light Talk. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about your background and... Uh, and how you got involved in this whole, um, but how did you get get the prop and how did you get involved in the water situation? Well, we got here by my wife. She wanted to live in Las Vegas and I can't live in brick walls, brick cells. Uh, you know, being a cop, you know, I look at those brick walls and it looks like a cage. But uh, <laughs> we looked around in Sandy Valley and she said no. So we came out here for a week and she went through every model that uh, was being built at the time. And we decided on one model by uh, Mike Mead's uh, construction company. We had it built and we're here. Well, what year was that that you uh, came here? How far back in history do you go in for? Oh, here? well, I believe we bought one lot in 95. And then 99, we bought another lot, Caddy Corner, to us on Back Street. And that's when we came in April looking for the different models. And we decided, I decided on one model, because I got tired after five days of going through models. And we went through that. every builder that was in this valley. <laughs> Anybody that's married understands what you're going oh. with. <laughs> I told I walked in, well, she was going around with my brother-in-law, <clears throat> excuse me, my brother-in-law in uh, Las Vegas. So I got tired of sitting in the car after, I don't know what, the eighth and ninth model. So I walked in and I looked around the front door and I told my wife, this is it. And that's that's how we got that's here. It. So you got about fifteen to twenty years time here. So you were here well, t uh, about ten years before you were here through the big building boom. And when you came in here, uh, did you ha have any fear about uh, your water situation? What were you told uh, by the by, now, by we, when you were asked around? Hey, what's you know here we are in a desert. What's the deal here with the water? You know, really, I didn't ask us. I really, Assumed? I really didn't think about it. Because the real estate agent, she didn't mention anything about it. She just said, you know, I got a nice lot for you. I wanted a five-acre lot with my wife. The way that the salesperson was talking to my wife, you know, well, you can, they can have a pig farm next to you and, or uh, whatever, and you can't, have nothing, can't control it. So we went with an acre and a quarter. But uh, there was never any doubt about the water. See, that's the same story I have, in a sense, because I, a lot of viewers here know that I was raised in Seattle and spent my first 40 years up that area, then moved to Tucson, Arizona, and then from Tucson up here, and frankly, I've never, uh, why would a person moving into a community where people are selling houses like crazy question, uh, you know, is there going to be water available? I was told, and I think I've uh, mentioned this in the show before, that uh, from the, we, when we inquired of the county, we inquired of the town, the Chamber of Commerce, and the realtor that there was enough water here for a, a city of 250 to 500,000 people. And so we were, you know, that's how I got involved with you and, and, and your water. So it's just when it, it broke, it's actually yeah. they started breaking. The first meeting I went with, too, was one with Jason King, the state water engineer, was actually there. And it got, the bomb got dropped in my lap because I hadn't heard of this before. Oh, I can uh, cut your water usage back because there's a severe shortage. And I'm like, I'm thinking maybe you thought that earlier than I did. It's like, well, <laughs> here we are. We're retirement age. We put our roots down. And now uh, the state's going to tell us um, we can't use the water that we told we were told we could after we put landscaping in and everything. Yep. 
we were told that uh, there's something called uh, first priority in water rights that uh, they Ooh. could actually tell us we could first use year, our... last in or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so I mean, I was shocked, and, and and then after being shocked, I said, you know, this is this just, you know, folks, when something is morally wrong, you just have to stand up, and that's really what I feel that the Prump Well Owners Association members, myself, Frank, and John Bosta, who's also on the on uh, one of the uh, founding members of that uh, of that association, came to, is that you know we just we just it's just basically not uh, right how we're being treated. So we're going to go on here. And uh, yesterday we carpooled down to Las Vegas because uh, for the listeners uh, and viewers here. Although the state holds its legislature up in uh, Carson City, which is the state's capital, and that, by the way, is about, you know, it's a good eight-hour eight drive from here in the southern part of the state. They also have a, a, a government building over in Las Vegas where you can go into, and uh, everything's on TVs. It's kind of like when you go to the, uh, the um, Nye County Commissioner's Chambers, and they have the TV screens there, and you can watch a proceeding that's going on when they have the meetings up in Tonopah. But this was much more sophisticated than what we have down here. It was first-class uh, studio situation. And you and we walked in. Uh, we got there quite a bit early. And Frank and John and I and my wife, who, who came up with us, we all signed in. They have a sign-in sheet there. And then we, ha we waited for the committee to start up in... Uh, uh, Las Vegas, uh, excuse me, in Carson City, and once it started, the state water engineer was asked by the uh, committee chairman, the Senate, Senate committee chairman of that governmental affairs uh, committee, to state his case. And so Jason, Al, uh, Jason King, the state water engineer, uh, gave an overview of the first bill, which was heard, was was. Senate Bill 65, and then that was followed by his presentation on uh, Senate Bill 81, which we, all of us, gave uh, gave testimony against the bills. So, uh, what was your view of the, you know, you gave testimony yesterday, Frank, and uh, I, I can't recall exactly what you said up there, so why don't you tell the, uh, the viewers so give a synopsis of what of what you you know what your gripe was yourself, and uh, each one of us had our own presentation. Well, what we tried to uh, convey to the commission is that uh, what they're doing is unconstitutional under the uh, U.S. Constitution and the State of Nevada Constitution. So we. Sat down about four or five months ago, me and John Boster, because John is a fanatic. He, I, you know, I trust his research more than I trust the lawyer's, I, I can lawyer's opinion. For that. So he started grabbing, cutting and pasting and researching all these Nevada Supreme Court here rulings, and we see a pattern. Over the last 110 years, they keep changing, they keep upgrading the water bills, 533, NRS 533, 534. But they, they had the Legislative Council Bureau, or the LCB, doesn't include them rulings, or doesn't research those rulings and, and make sure that whatever the upgrades are to the law they want to change, or the proposals, that matches the rule of law. And that's what we're fighting. They, they are violating the rule of law. Mr. Jason King wants to become the water czar, as Mr. White literally calls him. Well, I call him the water czar. I'll add something to that, too. One, another item that uh, John Bosta has in his uh, research is actual state Supreme Court, Nevada State Supreme Court rulings uh, that go back. Uh, uh, the water law, as far as I'm concerned, and, and the court decisions have shown uh, it's as clear as black and white uh, in the in the wording of the of the justice themselves that if you own a piece of property, you own 
the percolated water, which the, this is the water that's below the surface, down where the, where the water, you know, if you're going to put a well in the ground, and the water molecules, in a sense, um, mix up with the sand or dirt or rocks, whatever, right. down there, and they become indistinguishable and therefore part of the property itself. And as long as you're not uh, dr drawing so much water that you affect your next door neighbor's well, then you're free to go. Now, in both of these proposals, 65 and 81, if you read through the proposals, they were adding the term groundwater into the, into the state law because nobody's arguing the point that the state water engineer doesn't have authority to manage what's considered riparian water. That's water that's from rivers and streams and artesian flow above the surface. But, but as I mentioned, the lawsuits in the past, he's never had any authority to control or manage uh, groundwater, even though he says he does, and in fact yesterday he had his attorney uh, up in Carson City where the hearing was being held, she was asked, I think he might have asked her, somebody asked her to give testimony, she says, oh, they, oh this is no, uh, you know, there's no question here, you have the authority to manage this. Well, you know, it's one... It, and it's a Supreme Court you know, ruling says they don't. Yeah, so I mean, we have a difference of opinion. Now what I felt, uh, and I, you might agree with this, Frank, what was very interesting is the water engineer, Jason King, said these bills were just to sort of clean up some language, you know, to kind of bring us from what he said, That's what he get said. the water loss from the 19th century to the 21st century. Yeah, but total what, what he considers cleaning up is total means control. total control of the water. And since the water is a valuable asset belonging to a person that has the property, by him coming in and saying that I'm going to come onto your property force you to uh, lessen the amount of water you're drawing, to, uh, you know, do any manner of changes he, he, without any due process whatsoever, acting as a, that's why I call him a czar or a king, it's just called, it's by called. my edit, I'm going to uh, force you to do this. And by the way, if you don't do it, I'll fine you $10,000 for not doing it. Well, and, he, and this is just absurd. So so let, let's go on here. Wait, wait, let me just try okay, to start something. What Dwight's talking about is called eminent domain. It's taking without compensation. So by legislator, by legislature, we're allowed 2.2 acre feet of water. He wants to cut us down to a half acre foot of water. So he just wants to take it. That's you talking anyway. It's between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. So this is, yeah. So that, that's unconstitutional. Now, now uh, it would be one thing if somebody was to come to me. And say, Dwight, you know, I know you guys are settled in there, here and everything, but we need to build a freeway through your property here because we 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 had this happen when I lived in in uh, in the Pacific Northwest in the Seattle Olympia greater area there when they put the Interstate uh, Five and Interstate Ninety through the town they actually tore up people where people had houses to put this you know the freeway takes a lot of space and all of those condemn they're called condemnation hearings were held and the people were paid the fair market value and and any type of peanuts you know stuff it is peanuts but there is a process that they can yeah. do that they're not even uh in this case in these two bills or from what i have any intent of coming in and saying listen we need you to reduce water consumption we we recognize it's your water and we're willing to pay you to do that. I haven't heard any anything about that. They would rather go ahead and just take it and leave us uh, sitting with our hand out. Well, yep. you know that's and really, folks. And I know I've covered this in a lot of my um, uh, posts on my blog, which is Tilting a Windmill blog. I've written articles in the newspaper about it, as as Frank and John, because we're not just broken records here. We have what we consider a valid grievance. And if you happen to live in Basin 162, which is the water basin for, for our area here in southern Nevada, and, and looked at this, you would say, well, you have a valid point too, you know, that, that something's about to be taken away from you. You can't just sit back and expect uh, it's all going to go away. Like uh, if I just put blinders on, the, 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 the big meanies will leave, leave us alone. They're not. They are intent on this. Um, so anyway, Frank, I mentioned the uh, the Private Well Owners Association. 
What gave you and John the idea to start up this Well Owners Association? What is the Well Owners Association? And tell the uh, and uh, and then I want you to tell the viewers about the recent lawsuit that you and John Bost have filed against the state water engineer. Okay, about last year, uh, John started, you know, he's been doing research right along, but uh, a guy from Indian Springs, not Indian Springs, uh, Silver Springs, that's uh, North Nevada, had called John, or John was researching something and seen the Silver, uh, Silver Springs co-op. So John gave him a call, and the, the guy called him back, and that's how the, that's how we started formulating the co-op. We followed their their line of thinking. So they have a co-op? Yeah, but it's not functioning too well. Ours is functioning, but we we have to we need members. Like Mr. Lilly said, you can't fight this alone. As a co-op, as a co-op with there's eleven thousand two hundred wells here. Even if we only had 2,000 members, you know what those 2,000 members of a, a voting block can do? We can put our own commissioners in our areas. And then we can get back to the we the people of rule of law. Not the way we're going now. You have three commissioners. One in the north doesn't care about us. She only cares what happens up there. You have two down here. If they had a half a brain, they'd be dangerous. <laughs> We're not going to uh, Donna, Cox and, Donna Cox and Frank Carbone try, but they're always outvoted. So, but that's the idea. The votes, that's how you get noticed. So that's why I keep pleading with people, don't stop sitting back and join a co-op. It's only $60 a year, and you're protected from the water czar. Okay, Frank, to, to go on from there, uh, there's an application process people fill out. And this is a, a, a non-profit organization. We have 501 c By the way, the two people you see, uh, and, and people have watched me before or read, I don't make a dime off any of this. In fact, I'm staring right now at a, about $3,000 worth of, of video equipment and lighting and everything in here, even though it may not look like a, a fancy studio or not, because I'm really not set up in a in a building like a normal building uh, with a studio in it, we will, but I still so. got a lot of money invested here, and I'm not I'm not uh, complaining about that. And the hours that we all put in, we're all volunteers, and 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 what's even more um, more important here, I think that you people here need to understand that watch this, and some of you've been watching across the country. I know you have. I've seen I see on my on my pages that you guys are are uh, writing in from. I had people from Europe, in fact, write in, but Frank and I and John Basta are all retired age people. We're really doing this stuff because, number one, we believe it's right, and number two, we're, what's going to happen to our kids and grandkids and, and future generations in the valley here, which we all have become, in a sense, we're, even though we're adopted members of Southern Nevada, now a, a, a residence, I say, we like it here. This is our hometown yeah. now, and we don't want to see our, our our standard of living destroyed because of some some really bad uh, decisions. Now, what I know know from John, and you didn't you didn't bring this up yet, uh, and and what the viewers I want I had, are not aware of is that John Bosta actually was on one of the water uh, boards because the county commissioners here have established water boards that discuss these these kind of questions and John was the only person uh, generally 95 percent of the time I would say that actually would speak Question. up on behalf of just Joe Blow, a uh, me, uh, Frank, you, just the normal people and and bring points up. Uh, the problem with those boards and this is this has become very serious and I even told the uh, uh, the state's senator and chairman of the committee yesterday, I, did I said, listen, even though Jason King is sitting here telling you that there's 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 a plan in play to fix the problems down here and he's willing to work with the people in Prump, that it's, it, it's really 
a rigged uh, group of people. I mean, the committees are all made up of utility uh, company owners or managers, of um, of uh, land developers, of special interests along that line. Mining interests. Mining interests. And, and then there's one token um, person that actually has an interest as a private well owner. They all claim they have their own private wells, but what they keep pushing for are solutions and... Uh, and, and uh, agreements that favor their uh, right to continue developing and wasting the water at, at the, at the uh, cost of, uh, of private well owners. Because yes. that's really what we're getting at here, folks, is that they want to, and, and you can see it, if you ever, <laughs> I've been around a long time, you can see a train going where it's going to go, even though it's coming at you on the tracks, it might be right by you right now, you can pretty much see where it's going on the track. And all this is leading step by step by step to where they'll come in, do uh, force people to put meters on their wells, determine how much water each well owner is using, and then cut the use back. With that water being cut back, going to favor b more building, more development in, in uh, the Prump area here. And that's really what, you know, really uh, it's frightening because. Um, you can't help but believe, and I think Frank will agree with this, that after after research and after watching, going to meeting after meeting, that the county commissioners are by and large in lockstep with this idea. Yes, they are. Uh, they, they, they rarely come out. They might give lip service once in a while that they really want to do what's best for the people. But in the end, it seems like who really has their ear are, the, are the, what I, I keep referring to as a special interest. What, what do you think about that? I mean, you, Frank, I see, I know you get so frustrated, you don't even like to come to the meeting. Because I'm telling you, folks, when you go to the meetings and you sit there as a member of the audience and you go up and give your um, testimony at what they call the uh, public, uh, comment. public comments or during a particular item that they're discussing and then you have a right to come and give your opinion on it, you just, you just know you're just spinning your wheels. They look at you, sometimes with just a disgusted look on their face, or a blank, yeah, sort of a zombie look, and then it's just, okay, uh, do I have a motion to approve? Do I have a second and a vote? And it continually comes up four to one or seven, six to one, depending on what committee is, and it's the one person that's going, whoa, 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 and, and, and brings up a logical, well-reasoned, legal uh, reasons to not go along with it, gets voted out, uh, on the issues at one after another after another and so when Jason King says that they are coming up with a, a solution each item of the solutions each way these things are going forward is going more and more towards favoring special interest and not favoring a uh, private well owner I mean you could you that we was we, we went up there we're sitting there we're waiting and on the six, SB 65 you could I mean, common sense. That, that's all this takes is common sense. Exactly. You can see the steps that he's going through. Okay, you start, the, the biggest section is they want to control the water. They want to, they want to control the private well. It says right there, blue and white. That's the changes in blue. Blue and white says we, we want to control the waters of private wells. Then it goes on, you go to 81... There's nothing in there about taking care of the paper water rights, calling for beneficial use. That's the common sense approach. You have 60,000 water rights that... Acre feet of water acre rights. Acre feet of water rights. 30,000 of them are unperfected. They're banked. That's how these the good old boys save their water rights. They're banking them, and it's illegal. That's my opinion. If you read the anti-speculation law, it's illegal. The state engineer, we sent them a letter approximately June of 2014 asking him, well, not really asking him, we were telling him, we want beneficial use of the paper water rights. And he sent a nice letter back saying, no, I'm not going to do that. We have to, all, at the last paragraph, last sentence, says we all have to Compromise. Even though then, the state law says one yeah, thing. Yeah, the state law says you call for beneficial use after a certain I don't know, the period of time. 
We went to the, me and John and Judith. Somebody else was there, but they didn't come up. We went up to the listening section that the Jason King had in uh, Las Vegas. He had one in Tonopah, one in Las Vegas, and a couple other places. And that's how these changes to the two water laws came about. He listened to all the all the the, the testimony from the the listening sessions and turned it all the way around to his favor. But the common sense approach is you call beneficial use, you will it will come down to about thirty thousand acre feet of water with like ten thousand over the limit of the the basin. He says we're twenty thousand acre feet. Yeah, let me explain that a little bit what Frank's saying there. Um, yeah, I'm not too when, good at explaining. When, 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 when Frank talks about beneficial use, the, the the people of the state of Nevada, you and I, we own the water up on the ground surface. These water rights that we're talking about are rights to water that is not your common uh, well for your home. You are allowed two acre feet of water, uh, and, it, and it's like I said, it's right in court decisions just because you have your own private well underneath your property. You have the two acre feet of water to use. The, the water rights don't have anything to do with that water. That's the... There is no water rights for There's private. no water rights for private wells. It's just you have the right. You own that water. The 60,000 acre feet of water rights that Frank is talking about, these are water rights that... Uh, they just gave out, you know, they didn't, they just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm called it fluidly the way they did. It's the same office, the state water engineer's office gave these out, and now all these people are holding on to these rights. Well, the way it's explained uh, in the law is that you have to prove that you're going to put those water rights to beneficial use within a given set, uh, set time. And there is some a provision in the law for an extension. But when you keep giving people extension after extension after extension after extension, that gets into what Frank is talking about. They're just speculating. They're holding on to these water rights without being asked to prove that they're going to put them into beneficial use. And, and with the idea of speculating that, well, the economy might approve or, or God or some, the angels of Jesus comes down and sprinkles another uh, million gallons per day of water or something on us, and we have more water. We don't have any rivers here or lakes we can draw water from. Springs are dried so, up. So what happened? And I'm going to explain this really simple. This is from my my, my opinion. You're, way back in the 1940s and 50s, and how whenever whatever point in time this valley was developed, people came in here and they farmed. Uh, they set up farms and they grew cotton, alfalfa, and I, I suppose a few other crops, and they had huge diesel engine pumps that you would see uh, running a semi-truck down the road that were pumping water to irrigate all this. Good. And they well, did this pipe. They did this for years downtown here in Pahrump. They even had a cotton uh, gin down there that was processing the cotton for market. The alfalfa was being sold to, to ranchers and, and, and around the state. Well, then what happened is they drew so much water down uh, by doing this from the, from the aquifer. Underneath us, there's an aquifer. And at the time they came here, there was actually running water along what's Highway 160 that Did connects he, Trump. He, he, it was water coming out of the ground because it, there was water here for millions of years. And Mother Nature had, had, uh, had water stored in the mountains and snow in the winter, and then it melts and comes down and fills up the aquifer. Well, they had drained it to a point where it was no longer profitable to farm the cotton. So then they get the idea, well, listen, now I'm going to go ahead and take these, these huge farms, because when you're in Nevada, you have huge ranches and farms. One was mentioned yesterday, to give you an example, there's a ranch in the northern part of the state that is 100 square miles in size. Now, if this picture, how long it takes you, an hour and a half on the freeway to go uh, 100 miles, and then you'd have to make a right hand turn and go another hour and a half to go. That's the size of this ranch. And, and, but down here, they weren't that large, but they were still in the thousands of acres. So they took this land that they no longer could make money off. They said, well, let's tell you what we'll do. We are going to form a community here and, and divide this land up into to lots and sell the land 
to people like Frank and I and other people that came here to a point where we have around 38,000 people here in, 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 in Pahrump. That's a lot of houses they built. And they just did it, even though they had dra drained the water down to a point where it was dangerously low, uh, they continued to do it. Because why? Nobody from the county was stopping them. Nobody from the state water engineer's office was saying, hold on to your horses, uh, you know, cowboy. We need to take a look at the water situation. Even though it's been known for at least a decade how really serious the situation is. So all this time people are moving in. Nobody's telling them there's no water here. As I mentioned before that I was told a city could be here. And then what they do is they pull this um, kind of a three card money thing on you where now that there's a serious water situation they raise their hand and say but it doesn't affect us all because we have what is called priority water rights. They go back as part of the common law uh, debt doctrine, I guess, that first to use it, first to keep it. So not only did they drain the water down with their farming, then they sold us the property. We put wells in the property. Now they're going to come back to us after they overbuilt the valley out with too many houses and say, you're the ones that are going to have to give your water back. But what they didn't count on, I don't think, is that some of us were smart enough to go and look into past case history and the laws of water and say, wait a minute, hold your horses. This percolated water underneath our property is our water. It has nothing to do with your water rights up here. Uh, and, and this is where we've got Jason getting the state water, uh, in the, the state water, um, whatever they call their organization up there. And, and the legislature all, you know, confused. And so that's why they approached us with these two bills. You, they approached you, all of us, so it that is. they could change the law around to match what they it's, want it to it's be. It's called Go ahead, Nevada Frank. Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Okay, that's what, that's what it's called. But basically what it is, it's just another bureaucracy that's, yeah. that's up in Carson City, and they have people that uh, work for them, and they come down, and once in a while come down here and, and harass us is what I look at it. So Actually, they come out of Las Vegas. We're at the point, okay, so John and Frank f form this uh, Prep Well Owners Association, a co-op, so that we so that we could in a sense become a utility. We're like recognized as a utility, a co-op utility, so we'd have some type of standing in any proceeding. And they and Frank mentioned that they sent letters. I think uh, it was mentioned three or four letters have been sent, and nobody's ever bothered to to, to really address the issues. Do you want me to read them? We started in June of last two fourteen. We've sent three letters out. The first time to the governor, Sandoval. the attorney, the attorney general at the time, and the state engineer's boss who was Leo Dozoff. I might be pronouncing it wrong. And we never received a an answer. So in August, now wait a minute. What did you put into the letters? What were you, give us just a brief uh, brief synopsis of what was in the in the letters? What were brief you asking? synopsis of what we were telling him is that. The state engineer is not doing his job. He's not following the rule of law. I mean, it sounds like a broken record, but, it's, but that's you know, that's just where it comes down to. You're supposed to call for beneficial use, and he's not doing it. And as uh, Dwight said, he gets they all the water right holders are getting extension after extension, and that started in 1982. When's it going to stop? This is 2015. How many extensions do you need here? You know. That to where you should have to be said, listen, I'm either going to uh, use the water rights or I'm going to surrender them back to the state. But they're, tr but it, it's it's a can of worms. So anyway, nobody wants to go to court. You know, I mean, you get the the lawyers involved; they're expensive. But Frank expensive. and John, on behalf of the Well Owners Association, filed a lawsuit. Um, uh, just a week or so ago, February second, naming Jason King, the state engineer, uh, in his personal and official capacity, and and basically, I mean, this. Now I'm going to tell you, folks. I read through this lawsuit. I just got it yesterday, a copy of it, <laughs> and uh, the research. When I'm talking about case history, constitutional uh, laws, both federal and state, 
and just on and on. All of it, uh, all of what in a sense is our, our uh, what we believe to be the, our legal rights to owning our water and our ground is covered right here in this lawsuit, case by case. And even with this lawsuit being filed, let me explain the arrogance of what we're dealing with here. That attorney up there said that the, this, the isn't, legal, this doesn't mean anything. It's the committee, the committee council, she's separate from the Legislative Council Bureau, I believe. She just gives legal advice to the committee. She stated to the chairman that, because we, I asked the chairman if he would at least don't vote on this stuff until after the March exactly. 17th hearing. But he said this is probably going to go way past that. So anyway, she said to him that our lawsuit does not affect what they're doing on S365 and 81. Now, I wrote a letter to, to the chairman last night, being polite. I don't thank you for letting us testify, blah, 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 blah. I said, we took the two laws and we started with the, all the changes and we took piece by piece and analyzed them. And then we went out and took our research and applied it to the, the analyzed sections. So how can she come back and say that it doesn't affect what they're doing? So there's two things I told Mr. Kachia last night in the email. I said, number one, she didn't read it and understand it, or she's just telling you what you want to hear. It's amazing, folks, when it's you... A, it's when you, really when amazing. You, when you go to these committees that we're talking about, and when you listen to testimony like that given by this attorney, when you listen to testimony given by a very well-educated man, uh, Jason King, I will say he's polite, his assistants are polite, they're, 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 they're actually likable type folks, but they have it in their mind that, that and, and they admit, he, they freely admit that they that they made a huge mistake in issuing all these water lights, right? And so how they intend to fix it is on the back of the is on the backs well of the private well owners. We have a gentleman here, another person that's a, uh, I don't know if anybody knows water uh, and law, dealing with water here in Nevada more than John Bosta does, but Kenny Bent uh, is another, uh, he's been involved for years. I think Kenny told me he's lived here about 30 years in this valley here. So he's got a vested interest on the, like the rest of us. And he's, up, again, another guy getting up retirement age and everything. And uh, Kenny Bent basically told the county commissioners, we are nothing but low-hanging fruit. That's the way we're being treated here, that we're the easy people to just step on. We're going to solve uh, Basin 162 because we are we are uh, the, the main focus, I believe, of both of these these uh, rewrites of the laws that they're doing, yes, we because we are a problem that they created. The state water engineer created, the legislation, the governor, uh, all have allowed to fester because they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, uh, use the state law in existence to do something about the overdevelopment in the valley here. And so now in order to solve it and to let these special interests not lose their value and water rights and their, and their subdivisions that they've all lined up, uh, they're going to take uh, the water away from the private well owners. And, uh, and, and despite what previous Supreme Court hearings are or uh, legal opinions are, just if, if, I, if I can put my blinders on and just say that it's true, then I, Jason King, anoint that that's true. And I'm sorry, that's not the way, the way life is. Uh, we're reasonable people. All of us are reasonable people. Uh, Frank we spent 22 we, we years. Want, we didn't want to file a lawsuit, but when you write nine letters in a span of six to seven months and don't get answers from your elected representative, something's wrong. It's definitely wrong. And, and, but, you know, when you think about it, Frank, I hate to throw terms like conspiracies out there because it starts making us look like we're a bunch of, uh, idiots. you know, tinfoil uh, wearing um, idiots out here in southern Nevada, out here in the desert. But you you just get to, to the point that you realize that no matter what you say to these people, no matter what proof all of these previous lawsuits have told, you know, are in your favor say, 
going all the way back to U.S. Constitution law, uh, uh, every, they have the blinder on and they listen, they smile, they give you that zombie look, and then they say, no, this is the way it is. And you just, what am I going to do? I have to file a lawsuit. And by the way, nobody wants to file a lawsuit. This is... This, you know what this costs right here? Fifteen hundred bucks so far. Just, just for that, just just to to try to get their attention, and now we're facing uh, hiring a, a law firms to prosecute this if we can't make a settlement on it, and they don't appear willing to settle. Now, one of the things that the, I, I better talk, let me stop there for a second. The state senate uh, committee uh, chairman that we were we were in front of yesterday. He's he knows that this is a serious situation and he said if, the, if nothing is settled if we don't come to some type of agreement then this is going to end up being a lawsuit and it's going to end up these uh, prior water uh, seniority issues that I mentioned earlier are going to come into play and and then you guys are all going to uh, there's going to be just thousands of people lose their rights to water well that type of doomsday scenario is just, even though they, they might claim that this is what, what the, they can do with those priority rights, they're going to have to win it in a lawsuit or, or, or get other legislators to agree with them because right now the state law, uh, the, which is backed by Supreme Court decision, see the, the courts, when you go to before a court with an issue of law, they define what the law, what it is, and that's really what happened. Those Supreme Court decisions. Another state engineer, years ago, came before them trying to do the same thing, take control over of uh, the subsurface water down there, uh, and uh, he was told flat out that uh, no, that water belongs to the property owner. So those type of, of issues have already been determined, and yet these people, I guess, believe that they can go ahead and and muscle through these changes. But we have 11,200 plus private wells here, the largest collection of private wells in the entire state of Nevada. I would say so, yes. We have, now here's another statistic I want to throw out here. People that have fought for this country, we have 9,000 veterans in a community of 38,000 people. In other words, one out of about every four people that live here is a United States uh, military veteran who fought and defended the very constitutional rights that we're trying to get upheld to our, you know, our rights uh, right here in, the, in this situation we're talking about. And that's why, folks, I know you might come to visit my this uh, video and see that I talk a lot about this issue because it is the primary, when I tell you, say that I'm going to cover the news and events for the southern part of the state, for Nevada, uh, from the peanut gallery's perspective, which is really what we are, we're the peanut gallery, yep. this is the key <laughs> issue that's going on right now. I mean, we have the the finance issues of the county that, that's going to be a topic of, a, of the next video I do, but this is the key. You have three things here we're talking about if you think consider yourself as a living uh, organism. You need water, you need food, and you need air. If we don't have water, then you know, what, our whole uh, standard of living goes right down the tube. Right. Why would I have over an acre of property, why would people have 5, 10, 20 acres of property in the middle of the desert if they couldn't enjoy it and the water underneath it so that they could uh, have some horses out there and water the horses or have some trees? I think, I mentioned this before, I, the dust here gets horrendous. You have human activity goes on, and through that activity you have pollution and dust. We're in the desert. The soil's been disturbed because they went ahead and leveled the land and got all these other developments they want to put in ready. And now every time it blows, it gets this dust going in the air. So people plant trees like I did. Uh, Frank's got trees up at his place just so that we can help mitigate some of the dust and, and not affect our health. So it, it's a major issue here. And uh, I'm going to go into one other uh, thing here. I... Uh, I was astonished yesterday because while we were there at the meeting, and in the case of both bills, SB 65 and SB 81, there's a point at the very beginning where you have to state 
whether you're for the bill, against the bill, or neutral. And at that point, we came forward because we were against it, but people came forward neutral. Not I didn't see one person, I believe. Maybe they might have won the whole hearing that came and said he was for any of this, but everybody else was neutral. But it was neutral attorneys, against. representatives, listen to this, folks. Attorneys and representatives from every single county in the state, in except for Nye County, for every single major community in the state, except for Pahrump, and, uh, and I was astonished. I, I kept waiting for somebody from Nye County because right now the town of Pahrump, as you know, is under managed, it's being governed by the county. There was nobody there. I, I kept expecting, I thought, well, we have a district attorney, Angela Bello. She'll be the representative that, that'll come forward. No, Angela Bello. And I was just going, this is really interesting. Frank, John, I, and myself are the only people here from Nye County, and yet almost every sentence out of, the, out of the chairman's mouth was dealing with Pahrump's water situation. This water district's water situation. The, the term Pahrump must have been used 50 times yesterday. So there's one person, he does live in the county, his name's Oz Wickman, and he was testifying from up in Carson City, and he has consulted and worked with the water district board down here, but in his testimony, now listen to this very clearly, he came up, gave his testimony, and said, I'm here representing myself as a citizen of the state. And county. Not representing <sighs> Nye County, not representing Pahrump, not wa representing the water district. And what Oz was focused on, and what a lot of them was focused on, was how the state law change here in, this, in these two bills would affect wild, some provision about water for wildlife, like horses and burrows, and, I guess snakes and turtles or whatever. We don't lives count. On the wild. But because, and that isn't really an issue here if you're living in a town, but that was what a lot of those people were, like how are this language going to affect that? How, how is it going to be? Because like Oz mentioned one part, in the law it said that they would, if you were within a thousand feet of a utility company, then you could be forced to hook up to a utility company. 180. Huh? Right now it's 180. Yeah, right now it's 180 <laughs> feet, but they want to make it a thousand feet. So in other words, where I live here, uh, out here in the south end of Prump, it would be all, almost like from here to, down to thousand air. I mean, it's a long ways. A thousand feet would be that if they happen to put the utility down thousand air, then I would have to hook up to that utility. Now, Oz has water experience, so he is an expert witness, and uh, he said that using an 8-inch pipe, all the fittings and everything you'd use, the figure is about $40 a foot. So if they were to have that uh, language in the bill, which you would think would be very important to the town of Pahrump uh, and uh, Nye County, it would cost me $40,000 to hook it up to... <laughs> $40,000. Everybody in the audience is going $40,000. And all these uh, lawyers and uh, and county representatives that were there and sound representatives, they were concerned about that. But that shows you how critical this, this is when we start talking about changing laws. And yet not a single person uh, represented the people of Nye County or the people of Prump except John and Frank from the Private Well Owners Association. Myself as a private citizen, and so I looked at the, it was getting towards the end of these hearings, and I looked at the uh, the uh, committee chairman, and I says, I think it's pretty clear right now that we're not going to have anybody from Nye County or Pahrump, I'm paraphrasing the words I use, is going to be here, so I want to be on the workshop you're talking about, because I have such a serious issue here. I want the wording of whatever comes out of these laws to um, defend, protect my of my asset, my water underneath the ground, whatever we work out, I, I want my legal rights protected. And so the committee chairman said, yes, Dwight, you can be on the workshop. Welcome aboard. And then I believe it was either John or Frank. I did. Was it you? Uh, Step forward and says, well, yeah, we want to be on the workshop. So right now, if you live in Pahrump or Nye County, the only people that have, have officially, at least at the hearing, been invited to the workshop that's going to deal with this law is one private, bald old citizen here, Dwight Lilly, 
and and one uh, and two people and their and their private well owners association. So this is you know, I I just find that astounding. I don't know who dropped the ball on it, um, but if they do happen to say, oh well, we had Oz Wickman there. I just wanted to let you know that no, you didn't, because his testimony is is available on video. If you want to go to the state website, legislative website, watch. The hearing for yourself yesterday. He isn't talking about anything about uh, down here in Knight County. So, what do you think about that, Frank? Okay, first of all, let's get back to Oz and his forty dollars a foot. Now, we have a situation here in one of our developments called Artesia that uh, Hafen put up, Mr. Hafen. That has an eight-inch pipe going through the whole development. It's too small. So, right away, I disagree with his forty dollars a foot. So, what do you think it would be? Should it be a ten-inch pipe or twelve-inch pipe? That's what they use. They use 10 and 12 inch pipes on the East Coast because there was a, a state cop, state trooper I, I used to work with. As I did accident reconstruction, he used to be in the uh, uh, truck division. They used to inspect trucks. But his son works with the uh, a water contractor. They fix broken mains and everything. And all the pictures, you see them on Facebook, I have one. Yeah. There's nothing under a 10-inch pipe. So I disagree with Oz on that point. Okay, so say it was $60 a foot because the pipe diameter is bigger, the fittings are bigger. Now I'm talking about $60,000 yeah, to right. hook up 1,000 feet from here. That's now these are the reason why it's so critical, and I keep telling you folks this, that you need to contact the Prump a well owner associated uh, Send me a message on, on my Tiddling a Windmill Facebook page or and get involved in the discussions when I post something there. Get in, get involved with uh, with the issue because the I'm telling you, they, they put this um, this language. I got copies of the language right here of, of the uh, bill somewhere here. I'm getting so much paperwork here, I don't have anything else on the table. You can see that you had it before. But, the, but the, the bills, here's what they give you when you go down there. This is the laws I'm talking about. This is the language. Then they have in them uh, the proposed changes right in them. Uh, but this is important. I mean, how would you like to have somebody come up to you a year from now and you're, and you're sitting out on your front porch and say, Oh, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. We're from the uh, county and we're here to tell you that um, you have to hook up to Utilities Incorporated because they've now extended a trunk line a thousand feet from your property. And you're standing there with your septic tank and your uh, private well, and you're going, what? what's all this about? Well, the what's all this is about is what I'm talking about here. It's because this is where it's being handled. Now, if that, that particular provision happened to be put in this, this new law, you, they, you would legally be required to hook up. You'd say, well, well what am I gonna, gonna do? Well, now in Southern Water, Utility, I think it's Southern Water District or Southern Water Utility District, which is in Clark County, Las Vegas area. Their expert, who should, who was up there testifying at the meeting, he said, you know, right now what we do for people, because we have this situation where the people were on wells, and then because we put the water system in, hooked and uh, hooked up to the Colorado River down at uh, Lake Mead and started uh, pumping water uh, for for the drinking source to the groundwater. They had to hook up to the utility, and the cost, we would cover 85% of that cost for them hooking up, and they'd have to pick up 15%, but it was only uh, 100, $185 or something, wasn't it? Yeah. So in other words, uh, they had to pick up... Uh, it was $85 a foot the first... Something, uh, you know, and so now... Now we're uh, talking about sixty thousand dollars, or for whatever term you want to get. So that so it's one other reason why why you should uh, should really be paying attention to this. I I heard a guy not heard excuse me. Th this is what you run into here, and these and we have these meetings. Um, we discuss this locally. It's uh, it, it's brought up down in the at the water district meetings. Uh, Testimony is given by us up there all the time. And a guy comes on a, one of the social media sites, it must have been about two weeks ago, uh, because there was one of the uh, items being discussed had to do with what the water situation. And he called the rest of us basically idiots. And he says, well, I'm a mathematician, and I figure one inch of water was to fall over now, the floor. talking about that idiot about the turnabouts? Turnabouts? Yeah, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. 
that he did the mathematical calculation if one of water inch of water rained, how that was going to be enough water for everybody in the valley here. And I'm sitting there reading this and I'm going, how could anybody that's looked into this not know that, that water that falls on the surface when it rains, some of it, a very little portion of it, seeps down into the aquifer, but most of it gets evaporated away uh, because it rains, it forms puddles and stuff, and then, you know, it, it's drier. So the, it shows you the lack of knowledge being spread around and rumors out there that people have this false sense of security. Well, I'll tell you, I don't have any false sense of security, and uh, my trust level for government, at least here on the county level, is almost zero right now because I don't believe that I'm being properly represented. And so you're going to hear continue to hear me yell, yelling loud and clear. And by the way, there's going to be a series of videos that uh, we're you know we're going to put together at the people I know. I'm going to get Frank and John involved. Get uh, maybe Kenny Bent. Get some of the other people. Dan Gann. He's agreed to come on. And we're going to uh, do an education series. I don't know how many tapes it's going to be or anything, these programs, so that the people have a chance. You tune in. Now, I can't force you to tune in. All you have to do is, you found this video, you know, you went to YouTube, put in Tilting a Windmill, and it popped up, and this be in episode 12. But we're going to try to bring this information right out in simple layman's turn so that you're educated, because knowledge is power. Being ignorant, like this guy that was claiming it rained out an inch, therefore we don't have any water problems. Um, oh you know, one day he's going to wake up and the guy's going to be knocking on his door yep. and say, are you Mr. Jones, the guy that said you didn't have any water problems? Well, now, the problem you got now is coming up with $60,000 to hook into the utility a thousand feet down here. How's those apples for you? Um, I'm trying to think what else uh, we need to cover here today. I, I'd like to cover something. Okay, Frank, you go ahead. You're the guest just here, and, and I, I just had, you know, I wanted to cover some area. I think yeah, I pretty we can. much This is real quick. My two concerns with these two bills, one is the SB65, they want to do away with beneficial use and bring in that preferred preferred something that all the other people from Clark County saying that's no good, we don't like that. The second thing is... They want to. They want to expand 180 feet to 1,000 feet. That ain't good for us. That's good for the utility companies. But now take utility in Pump Valley is the largest utility we have out of the three of them. Their service area is 22,000 lots. They only have service in the ground for 6,400. Now they had what they call dead spots or dead flows, which means that when the stuff is in the tube, talk about the sewer line now, there's no flow, so they call it a dead spot or a dead flow or whatever. So now, just before the announcement of SB 65 and 81, they're doing these uh, upgrades, and who's paying for the 10% of the upgrade? They call for a 10% increase. So what's going to happen when they put in all this all this infrastructure for the other 16,000 lots or the, the habitable lots that are need, need water, we're going to be paying $500 a month just for water. Well, I can explain to you what's going to happen because it came up and I covered this at, at either the last, no, I think maybe a couple of episodes here ago. The Willow Creek, which is now Discovery Park, Willow Creek Golf Course, it's a sewer mess down there because of the holding ponds that were um, the allowed to do it. It's not a sewer mess, but it's a health hazard down there um, to clean it up because now the county and the and the utility company have kind of come to an agreement to get this thing going. They came out in the paper. They raised. They've got a thing before the public utility commission to raise the rates that people pay for their sewer and water ten percent. So in other words, if you're paying a hundred dollars, now you get to pay one hundred and ten dollars a month. And if you're on a fixed income, uh, then come up with another ten. I guess. Don't buy some of your medicine or whatever you've got to do. But but you can see when it, when what Frank's saying is as they want to expand these utilities out, and they have already like like we covered already in this in this uh, episode, they're illegally as far as we're concerned banking these water rights that they have, so that they can expand. You the customer that they expand in, you the person who has a private well and septic system. 
will be told you have to shut that down. And as J.C. King said yesterday, they want to make you cap it off. So he calls it a straw on the ground. Reduce the number of straws in the ground so there's less of a chance of contamination getting into the aquifer. And you get to come up with this uh, six forty or $60,000 to hook into their utility. Because they're not going to do it. They're, they're not going to pay it for you. you they're going to sell you the service, but you're going to pay for the infrastructure. Just like the people in Pahrump are going to pay the utility people in Pahrump, the people around Utilities Incorporated, are going to pay to clean up Willow Creek. There, it's not the utility that's going to pay for it, it's the people. people. So, I think that's about all we have uh, yeah. right now. And I appreciate you folks turning in. Um, I'm going to have another program. I'm going to probably film it either tomorrow or the next day. And it's going to have to do with uh, the financial situation here in the Valley. Uh, if you get a chance to read the uh, Pearl Valley Times for yesterday on Wednesday, I have a letter to the editor in there and I kind of cover uh, what my what my issues are with that. And then I'll also include some other um, uh, news from the around the area, some other issues that I didn't get into this one because I felt this episode need to focus on Senate Bill 65 and 81 and what we experienced. And, and we're, by the way, myself, and I'm pretty sure the Prep Well Owners Association are going to continue to attend oh, yes. these type of, uh, of hearings and we're going to get involved in that workshop because uh, it's either that or just uh, surrender right now and roll over. And uh, so next time, folks, uh, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye now. If anybody needs more information about the Pahrump, the Private Well Owners Co-op, co you can go to www.pahrumpwellowners.com. Everything is there, the application, the mission statement, all our letters to the engineer, the governor, every, everything is there. So please, I don't know, why, I don't know how to light you people up. You know, get you fired up and mean and, and protect yourselves. It's, right now, we only got 80 members of the co-op out of 11,200 plus people. Wake up. Not that I'm saying we're going to have a conspiracy or anything like that, but these people are not protecting you. They want to hurt you. Wake up. Thank you. Okay, again. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and include this in, you know, this last part into the end of this week's video. And again, folks, thanks for tuning in and spread the word around. Uh, you know, if you watch this, tell somebody, hey, why don't you click in and see what uh, Dwight talked about this week and, and his guest, Frank. And so, as I say, this is the news from the peanut gallery's perspective. You're not going to get the type of coverage on these issues, the depth of them from any other source here in Southern Nevada, uh, because we uh, we care about what's going on. We're living this. We're not just reporting the news. We're actually uh, up to our eyebrows in this issue. So goodbye, folks. Take it easy. It wasn't complicated.